What's going on guys, Mr. Hurricane here once again, and today I'm bringing you guys my week 2 picks for the 2012 NFL season, and I did my picks last week, and I also recapped the week, I was 9-7 and seven overall with my picks, so just over 500, and I made a preview video earlier in the week for the Thursday night football matchup between the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers, and I was wrong in that game because I expected so much more from a Chicago offense, so I'm already 0-1, 9-8 overall, but ready to preview the rest of the games this week, and you guys my overall prediction so we kick it off now first game on Sunday we have KC at Buffalo and in week one KC lost to the Atlanta Falcons and Buffalo lost to the New York Jets and Mark Sanchez really had his way with that Buffalo defense something I did not expect him to have with a I thought a very improved defense overall with Stephon Gilmore Mario Williams but for my prediction this week, I am taking the Kansas City Chiefs to win 24-21. to They're getting Tom Baha Lee back. I like some of the things they're doing on their offense. And I think KC gets the victory and Buffalo falls to 0-2 after I thought they were going to be one of the sleeper teams in the AFC. But we'll see how that goes. Next up, we have the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. Both of these teams lost in Week 1. I wasn't all that impressed with the way the Carolina Panthers played. I do expect their offense to bounce back, especially the run game against New Orleans, but I am still taking the Saints in this one. I don't think Drew Brees allows that team to fall to 0-2, and I think they can still take advantage of that Carolina secondary. I have the Saints taking this one on the road 30-24. Next up, we have the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals AFC North matchup. Obviously, Cleveland was not very good on offense last week with Brandon Whedon having a very rough start, I believe a 5.1 passer rating. Their defense definitely showed up, but the Eagles got the victory in that one, and Cincinnati got beat by Baltimore pretty bad in that game. But I think Cleveland has a lot of things to do on offense, especially with their play calling last week. It was way too basic with power running and slant routes, like I talked in my recap video. And I do have Joe Hayden out now with a four-game suspension. So I am taking Cincinnati in this game by a score of 20-13. to Next up is the game that I will be watching at 12 o'clock Central Time tomorrow, the Minnesota Vikings and the Indianapolis Colts. I made a preview video for this. It's probably going to be out before this video goes up. Not sure exactly when, but go check that one out if you want to see a more in-depth preview of this match. Up, but I have the Vikings taking this one 30 to 20 because I think the Vikings are going to get after Andrew Luck, and I think the Vikings are going to have a good balanced offense if Percy Harvin can once again get going and Adrian Peterson plays like he did in Week One. Up next, we have the Houston Texans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Obviously, Houston had a pretty easy week one against Ryan Tannehill in his first start in the Miami Dolphins. They had a 30-10 victory, and the Jaguars almost pulled it out in week one. Blaine Gabbert looked much improved. And in this matchup, I am taking the upset victory by the Jacksonville Jaguars, 23-20. And I'm picking the Jaguars because I think their offense is far improved, even though they were against the Minnesota Vikings last week. They have new weapons on offense. MJD is back. And I believe they have the players on offense now to be much more balanced and much more competitive. I looked back last year at how these two teams played each other, and the Houston Texans won both games by scores of 24 to 14 and 20 to 13. So even though Houston's much better on paper, they were not dominating this team as the Jacksonville Jaguars have a pretty good defense. They are without Daryl Smith in this game, and Derek Cox is questionable. And I think the Jaguars come out hungry against the Texans after a heartbreaking loss to the Vikings, whereas the Texans weren't really tested last week by the Dolphins. Maybe they come in this this week, underestimate the Jaguars, and they get surprised on the road. Jacksonville in this game, 23-20. Moving on now to the Oakland Raiders traveling cross country to take on Ryan Tannehill and the Miami Dolphins. Both of these offenses struggled last week and I really expected a lot more from the Oakland Raiders with Carson Palmer and Darren McFadden now back playing together. Although they had Janarius Moore out with the game and they had to start like Rod Streeter who was a rookie out of Temple and then Derek Hagan. It wasn't really a whole lot for Carson Palmer to throw to but I'm going to take the Oakland Raiders in this game because I think they have the edge on defense. I really wanted to give this one to the Miami Dolphins but I can't see their defense outplaying their Oakland Raiders and I'm taking the Oakland Raiders in this game 17 to 10. Next up we have the New England Patriots and the Arizona Cardinals who will be without John Skelton likely this week. He is doubtful to play. Kevin Cobb taking over for his spot and I really liked what I saw from the Arizona defense last week against Seattle but I don't see them silencing Gronk Hernandez in that New England Patriots offense and I'm not very high on the Arizona offense especially the running game against this front seven of New England and so I'm taking New England in this game by a score of 30 to 14. On to the Tampa 
Bay Buccaneers and the New York Giants, the defending Super Bowl champions who suffered a week one loss two Wednesdays ago at the hands of the Dallas Cowboys. And the Buccaneers are coming off of a win against the Carolina Panthers, a game I predicted that they would win. And I really like what I saw of the Buccaneers overall. I mean, Doug Martin ran the ball very well. And their defense let Carolina do absolutely nothing on the ground. And I'm going to take the upset in this game once again. I really like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now, and I'm taking them in this game to start 2-0 on the year, 27-20 over the Giants. Baltimore and Philadelphia. Both these teams played like exact opposites last week. Baltimore was lights out on offense, whereas Philly was as shaky as it can get. Michael Vick had to throw like 56 passes, and they barely got the victory late. And I don't expect Philly's offense to play as poor as they did in week one. I expect LaShawn McCoy to also get the ball a lot more against Baltimore's defense. But Baltimore has Ray Rice and Joe Flacco played great. I'm going with the Ravens in this game by a score of 30-24. to on to the Dallas Cowboys at the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the Cowboys haven't played for a good while. They played Wednesday night last week. So we will see how in sync that offense is. They were very good against the Giants. Whereas, I wasn't really impressed with the Seahawks. And I wasn't really all that crazy about Russell Wilson's play against the Cardinals. But he did give them a shot to win late in the game. But I am taking the Cowboys in this one, 26-13. I really like Dallas's defense right now with Brandon Carr and Morris Claiborne. And I also like their young linebacker and Bruce Carter. Now we have the Washington Redskins and the St. Louis Rams. RG3 was impressive in week one, and what I noticed from that offense was they threw a ton of screen passes and a lot of read option. I really liked what they did in their offensive approach against the New Orleans Saints and they came away with the victory. And for the St. Louis Rams, they almost upset the Detroit Lions last week. I really like what they did in their defense. They have some aggressive cornerbacks now with Janoris Jenkins and Cortland Finnegan. And what I'm going to watch for this week is to see if Washington throws as many screens as they did. And RG3 threw a lot of short passes to Pierre Garçon, so I want to see if this aggressive secondary in St. Louis tries to jump some of those routes and force some turnovers and see if they can get the victory in this one. But I am taking the Redskins in this game because I don't like St. Louis's offense very much, so I have the Redskins by a score of 27 to 13. On to the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Jets, of course, were very impressive last week. Mark Sanchez surprised a lot of people with the way he was throwing the ball. Rookie Stephen Hill had a couple of touchdowns, and Jeremy Curley also had two touchdowns in the game. One was a punt return for a touchdown, and Pittsburgh suffered a defeat against the Denver Broncos and Peyton Manning's return to the NFL, but I think Pittsburgh bounces back this week, does not go 0-2, but I do want to see how Mark Sanchez plays. He has a lot of people's attention right now, but I take the Steelers in this matchup 24-17. On to Tennessee at San Diego. The Titans, of course, had Jake Locker get hurt last week, and I believe he is questionable to play, so we could see either him or Matt Hasselbeck. And while I'm not a big fan of the San Diego offense, I'm also not very keen on the Tennessee offense. I'm not a big fan of Chris Johnson and his four yards last week, and we'll see if Kenny Britt plays this week. I did read that he was expected to get about 20-25 snaps, and he had full participation in practice from what I'm reading, whereas Nate Washington did not participate, and he is still questionable. But I'm taking the San Diego Chargers in this game by a score of 23-12. to and now the Sunday night football matchup, my game of the week. I can't wait to watch this one. The Detroit Lions at the San Francisco 49ers. Of course, Detroit did have some offensive struggles last week. Matt Stafford threw three interceptions that could have been more. And I don't foresee the Lions having any success on the ground against the San Francisco front seven. If they're to win this game, they have to throw the ball and Matt Stafford has to play a lot more effective and a lot more mistake-free football because the 49ers, they don't turn the ball over and they also have some impressive playmakers on offense. I am taking taking the 49ers in this one to win 31 to 20. And finally, we have the Denver Broncos and the Atlanta Falcons on Monday Night Football. Matt Ryan versus Peyton Manning. Both of these teams had impressive offensive showings last week, and Peyton Manning showed that he is back and he is still Peyton Manning and very effective in the pocket. Matt Ryan, I think, has the edge with his weapons with Roddy White and Julio Jones as well as Tony Gonzalez, and so I'm expecting a very close matchup in the Georgia Dome on Monday night, but I'm taking Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos by a score of 33-27. to And so, guys, that completes my week two predictions in the 2012 NFL season. My winners this week were the Chicago Bears, that one's already wrong, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Saints, the Bengals, the Vikings, the Jaguars, the Raiders, the Patriots, the Buccaneers, the Ravens, the Cowboys, the Redskins, the Steelers, the Chargers, the 49ers, and the Denver Broncos. Be sure to leave your thoughts on the week two matchups in the 2012 NFL season in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about my predictions, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys after the week two games. Have a great weekend.